global makeup artist and beauty expert, Ruby Hammer is the founder of her beauty range, Ruby Hammer Beauty. With over 30 years of experience working across editorial TV, red carpets, and catwalks, Ruby's story is one I cannot wait to share with you all. Stay tuned. Hi everyone and welcome to Founder Beauty, a podcast dedicated to beauty entrepreneurs built some of the biggest brands today and where we learn exactly how they did it. We'll cover some of the most intimate stories, their path to success and how they overcame the obstacles along the way. I'm Akash Mehta, CEO and co-founder of Fable and Maine, a modern hair wellness brand inspired by ancient Indian beauty secrets. I decided to launch this podcast as a founder keen to learn and connect with fellow beauty brand founders around the world. I believe in collaboration over competition, as so I'm using this platform as a way to hopefully help and inspire each other. It can be quite a tough and lonely journey. So if you are an entrepreneur or simply just curious how to build a brand, this podcast is perfect for you. So without further ado, it's a delight to welcome our guest for today, Ruby Hammer. She is the global makeup artist renowned for pioneering inclusivity within the British beauty space. She's introduced some of the world's biggest global brands to the UK, including Aveda, Tweezerman, and Lositan, and launched products for Estee Lauder, Clarence, Clinique, and Revlon. Distilling over 30 years of experience working with brands, in addition to cover shoots, TV, and red carpets with the likes of Naomi Campbell, Kate Moss, and Tom Hanks, Ruby launched her eponymous beauty range in 2019. A signature capsule collection of beauty essentials, Ruby Hammer Beauty is designed to simplify beauty routines with high performance cosmetics and tools. As one of the first makeup artists of color to regularly feature on British TV, receiving an MBE from the Queen in recognition of her contribution to the beauty and cosmetics industry, Ruby is a national industry icon and it's my absolute pleasure to have her here with you. So Ruby, thank you for being with us. Thank you for asking me. My God, it's been ages because we know of each other and we yep. never met in the flesh and then we did and then straight yeah, we did. it has come about. So I'm exactly. thrilled to have met you and your lovely sister and I'm really glad we're doing this. So. Oh, thank you. so. Yeah, and it's always easier and, and more enjoyable for me when I've met the person I'm interviewing and also we have a connection and friendship so I feel like this yeah. is going to be a really yeah. fun conversation so Ruby I asked all my guests the same initial question and I'm, I'm curious to know your answer for the first so the question is yeah. who in a nutshell is Ruby oh my god Ruby is a woman Ruby is a mother Ruby is a wife Ruby is a creative lucky enough you know, to make a living from my passion. So in whatever sphere that is, Ruby works. Ruby has never been lazy. <laughs> um, and she's a all-rounded human being. You know, she's not young anymore. And there's a lot of life experience there, not just about our work. There's life experience yeah. there. And um, the older I get, it's not more complex. It's as though Ruby gets more complicated, but it also yeah. simplifies many, many things. So yeah. I'm just Ruby, the person that's lived the life that's been handed to me, yeah. and I'm still living it. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, well, you talk about life experience. Uh, I, I want to talk a bit about the beginning because uh, your story uh, is quite fascinating. You, you were born in, in, in Jos, Nigeria. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Which uh, uh, for anyone listening, it's a little bit north, I think, of Abuja, which is the capital, yeah. not Lagos. Everyone thinks it's Lagos, but it's Abuja. Yeah. Uh, and in, uh, in, in 1961, yeah. it wasn't, you know, Abuja wasn't the capital. It no. used to be... Um, I think it was Lagos or something. It was Lagos back in the, the day, whole, yeah. The whole um, map of Nigeria has changed to what it was. It only consisted of 12 states when I was born in wow. 1961. They'd just been given their independence by the British. And my yeah. late father was a doctor and gone there for a one-year contract. But they needed teachers, lawyers, all kinds of things he was going to do. One year contract, then come home to what was then East Pakistan, yeah. and set up his clinic. My mum was seven months pregnant with me, so they were just going for a year. But wow. we ended up living there for 12 years. I was born, my brothers were born, he worked, he became chief medical officer of that big state. And now Nigeria has, I don't know, 26 states or something. So It's, it's crazy, yeah. 
but I've yeah. seen two civil wars in my time. So that Biafran war when I was still a yeah. child and the East Pakistan, West Pakistan civil war, which is right. why we ended up being in the UK. And uh, so you came at, was it 12 years old to the UK? Oh, to the UK. Yeah. We were here on vacation, yeah. we were on holiday. Wow. And I probably would have gone back to then East Pakistan and they were looking at boarding school for me in Darjeeling in India. You know, that would have been yeah. right. And this civil war broke out. And in the end, he, you know, there were five of us, my parents, my two brothers, myself. He didn't have a job in Africa anymore. He's not going to yeah. take someone to a war zone. And... We were, we were loving it because we didn't grow up with any TV or nothing. So we were like, oh, go to the parks, go and, you know, eat toffee apples and candy floss and go to the yeah. cinema and go shopping and watch telly to the heart's content. You know, there was no school. Yeah. You didn't think about war. It didn't hit you in that way. Yeah. And then eventually it crashed when my dad came down and said, I bought a house and it was in Putney, sight unseen. And he... We took a long cab drive. It was freezing cold. It got us all, put your coats on, we're going, and we kept going and going and going, going, where the hell is this? Yeah. So we were in the suburbs there in Putney, and he bought the house. Then he got a job, put us in school, and yeah. that was about 48 years later. So this UK then became home, and home. London in particular. I've never really, this is the longest I've lived anywhere else. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> and what well, one story I read about it, uh, your kind of upbringing in London was the, I can say obsession because it's the right obsession about magazines and makeup artistry. And I, I remember I read somewhere that you had like a bunch of torn out looks on your bedroom wall. Well, and You know, yeah. when you're a teenager and people have, you know, my brothers were sports fanatics, so they had in their corner of the room because yeah. we did share for a bit. Yeah. <clears throat> they had all sports, whoever they were, tennis, cricket, football, this and that. And then my bit didn't even have my other brother had like music, you know, pop stars, all this. I always just had models and bits, beauty strips, this photographer, that one. And, you know, they're going like, wow. what is wrong with you? Why have you only got women up there? And I'm like, look, at it's the makeup and it's this photographer. And look, that was the hairdresser and she's this model and she's that one. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I plastered all across my side of the, you know, three quarters of what I had that was there. And yeah. I would get the piss taken out of me, but, but there you go. <laughs> that's, I mean, you know what? And look at, look at where you are today. This is a manifestation of its, the, the finest, right? It's, it's, well, it's seeing, it's the yeah. Passion, that passion came through. Exactly. As I say, even today, I just think I am blessed that I make a living from what I've, loved yeah and you know beautiful. so that that's amazing because so many of us have to earn money or do end up doing things that doesn't satisfy your soul and yeah. actually there's a lot of hard work in our industry Akash you know well when you start a brand or whatever it is all the steps of it are complex nothing is easy no. but the fact that you love it makes it very easy to bear with it when times are difficult because you you just have a relentless resilience there that comes from love that you might not have if you were just doing it to make another money or just listening to somebody else doing a job or whatever so this I is this is a passion passion pays <laughs> Exactly. And passion always proves itself out. It's so uh, tell us a little bit about, I guess, your, you had such an incredible career um, from all types of experiences. But what were some of the highlights on the journey um, that you had as you became a leading makeup artist? When, when you have such a long career and you're still a young yeah. man, so, you know, I'd love somebody to ask you that in about another 20 yeah. years. So I've had quite a long career. And in that, there have been quite a lot of landmarks. So it's quite hard to pinpoint them, but I'm just going to pick a few. Yeah. And there are more than one. People think there's just one, but there isn't. So no. imagine the first time as a makeup artist you shoot for Vogue. And I'd shot for French Vogue and I did something for American Vogue, but I'd never shot for British Vogue. And I got that booking and it was for my French agent. So it was like... All these years I'm living in London and I don't get a booking from from London. <laughs> so but funny. I got the job for my first British Vogue from my French agent. So that's a landmark as an artist where you think, 
okay, that's a magazine, you know, I shot for Elle and Marie Claire and Bazaar and all that, but there is still a bit of cachet to Condoleezza Folk. And that was amazing. I didn't sleep that night. And in the end, when you start the job, you do go into autopilot. You go into, you know, you listen to the brief and you you do it. So I knew I wasn't doing anything that's going to suddenly change the way Vogue ever looked. I just had to do the best and execute my brief. But that first time, yeah, shooting for Vogue. Second something is when we launched Aveda into the UK. So we were the exclusive distributors of that, me and my ex-husband. So I'd known Aveda from years, from when I was at university. My boyfriend was from Minneapolis. And I'd come across the brand and, you know, years later he's thinking, he's thinking, what should we do? He was a beauty entrepreneur, started in the fashion business. And then I said, no, it's got to be things like Kiehl's. You know, at that time, it was also a private brand, you know, that hadn't been bought by L'Oreal. Mm-hmm. It was the same. So you had to just keep reaching out to them and they, they weren't interested. But eventually, when we got them, we were able to get them and we launched it in Harvey Nichols. We were the first ones to put it into QVC. So it was at high end. It was in salons. It was in a department store, which Aveda had never done themselves okay. before either. And it was on something like that was looked down upon as QVC, but it wasn't. I said, you don't have to do it. Now, every luxury brand, a brand rather, clamors to get into QVC because they know they make the sales and it's wide reaching. It's you, you get a different consumer, you know. But at that time, they were looking at us like, Oh my God, you know, what are you lot doing? But it was that multi level marketing. So that was a big, big thing in our brand. And we brought things like Tweezerman that are now, we're not, I don't know who the distributors are now or whatever, but we were the first ones to put them here, get the PR for them, do the marketing. And then it's, it's gone bigger and out of our hands. So things like that. So that's one. And then Ruby and Millie, which is in the 90s. You know, um, that was with my partner, Millie Kendall, but it was a partnership with Boots. And that kind of deal hadn't been done before either. So it was a Boots owned brand, but launching in Harvey Nichols and Selfridges and then showcasing in the bigger Boots um, stores. You follow that, and we've got, I got an MBE in 2007 for my contribution to the cosmetics industry. So that's a big landmark because that I can actually put on my gravestone somewhere, you know, you'll have Ruby Hammer MBE, something like that. Um, and then now we come to my focus brand that bears my name. It's not smaller, but equally important to me because it brings all those years of experience. I'm self-funded, so it's quite hard. It's not as though you've got a lot of resources behind you. And I've worked 360 degrees, you know, the front of a brand, back of a brand, consulting for them, helping them, and then just as a jobbing artist too. So whether that covered editorial, advertising or campaigns, television work. So there's been many, many different bits to what I do. And there have been many, many little landmarks. So sometimes people just know Ruby and Millie and they think it's just that. Some people Mm. just know the TV work and they think that's all I've ever done. But it just goes to show in a long career, I've done lots of lovely things and they've all been different. So that that keeps the love for what I do at the forefront of everything. So. That's beautiful. <laughs> I love, and I, I didn't also know, I mean, I knew about the Aveda in doing my research, but uh, it's great yeah. to, to know how, because my first ever job was at Aveda. Uh, when, oh, wow. when, but at Estee Lauder, so I was with Amanda LaRue and her team in EMEA. So, and, so how, yeah. when um, Estee Lauder acquired Aveda, um, so 
they had all these distributors. You know, we were the UK yeah. one. There was someone in Australia, in Germany, in Italy, in this. So they didn't want to have to deal individually with all these distributors. Some were good. We were very successful. The Australian yeah. gentleman was particularly successful. And they had some great American ones that made them a fortune. But there were some yeah. really rubbish ones too. So they yeah. didn't want that. So they acquired the whole thing and they and bought they us. Of, that was uh, when, you know, they, they took care of us very well. But yeah. horse... Record Becker, when he was alive, yeah. he said, you know, you guys help because nobody perceived it as a department store brand. So all exactly. the things that Lorda bought into, he said, you guys will help do that. And we were able to do that. But thank you very much. They gave us a nice fee for our success. And that's when we exited. But oh, okay. it is yeah. that time. Aveda yeah. still has wonderful, you know, it has some synergy with your brand now, Fable and May. Yeah. Because it's that kind of, it's got that Ayurvedic tradition, but it's got to be clean, it's safe, yeah. it's natural, it smells fantastic, you know, everything. Yeah, it smells like Aveda, of, that's like the hashtag. Lots yeah. of little connections, so. Yeah, uh, it's amazing. But no, it, it, it's just, it's, uh, it's great to see all your landmarks are so diversified as well, which is a breath They're of different. experiences. Yeah, it's, 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 it's great. And, I'm, and I know there's many, many more, but I want to get into the, the main star of the show, which is what we're here for, which is now your, your namesake <laughs> brand, uh, Ruby Hammer Beauty. How, like, okay, so there's so many questions I have. You obviously had a lot of learnings from Ruby and Millie, you know, creating that makeup brand with Boots and a specific <laughs> retailer, plus with a co-founder, who's Millie's incredible, we love her. But then to create it on your own, um, self-funded, um, you know, in a, in a very saturated market, how, what was your mind at the beginning? Because a lot of people listening are thinking of creating a brand and maybe on their own, maybe self-funded. So yeah, what, the, was, what the, was your the thought? The thing I can share in that journey is like, there are differences. When we had Ruby and Millie, I had a partner. And it was a huge line. It was th almost 362 skews or something like that. So it was massive. We had skincare, we had all the cost, you know, like we had 60 lipstick shades, yeah. 60 nail polishes, uh, found out all the kind of things that people banter now about being inclusive and type. So we were like that. We catered across the board and ages and everything. Yeah. So when you've had that and then you down tools, you know, we left in 2010-11. My mother was then diagnosed with cancer and, and given only two weeks to live. So that was the first time. So, you know, you're running full pace on a treadmill and then yeah. literally you press that stop, you know, that red button and it stops. Yeah. It's like a jolt. And I took care of my mom and then when she left, I took care of her deals. So, and by that time, Ruby and Millie had gone. So people would keep asking, are you going to do anything else? What, what's next? What's this? What's that? But because with the death of my mum, it was the end of my parents, so I felt like a big orphan nanny at yeah. 50. And it knocked me into my menopause as well. Mm. So that affects women quite it's a fundamental change in, in everything, just the way you are. So everybody would keep asking, what are you going to do? And I wasn't, I didn't feel that confidence and strength to come up with anything. So I said, well, nothing at the moment. I'm just doing my artistry, doing this, doing that. Then eventually sitting on a beat, you know, because time is a healer. You do, yes. you have you do to heal. take time out. And I mourned my mother, I mourned my parents, I tried to take care of myself and was balancing this new me, like, what the hell, I can't sleep, I've got this, I've got that, what is wrong with me? Um, mm -hmm. Just cope, and it's not, people didn't talk about the menopause still, they do talk about it, but it's probably in the last three to four years, if we say it, but even then, nobody, you know, you go on a shoot and you're the oldest person, but because you're hip and young and whatever, Nobody never referred to these things. Yeah. Um, then one day it just hit me that, yeah, if I do it, it doesn't have to be big. I've, I've, I've downsized everything. I've made it a bit more. It has to be functional. For me, even at Ruby and Millie or whatever we did, it has, mm -hmm. has to function. So I thought, what could I do then? And I looked up and there was a lot of noise. And social media was here now. So there's a different way to sell as well with the, with the e-commerce and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok on the borderline there. All these things. And I'm thinking, okay, so I have to do it 
small and tidy, and I and I just edit it. And because I was self-funded, it was from necessity. I can't have 50 shades of foundation because I just can't afford it. I couldn't afford it. And I thought, people like Fenty and this one are doing such a grand job. Am I really going to be able to match that yet? So you just had to, you know, some were necessity, some were just why I felt I was of a certain age. And I said, it just needs to be a bit more edited. And then if you need little bits, there's loads of lovely brands out there. You can just add them. Yeah. And I just did it from there. Did a small edit, and he had a mishmash of things. You know, he had this magnetic brush. It had a nail kit, smallish one. It yeah. had a, a, a pot of joy for no other thing that you could put your tools in it, or it just made it made me bring out a smile looking at it. And I thought I'll just have that on my desk. I like it. I just did it like that. So everything just grew organically. Wow. And then with a bit more success at when the product sold, then I introduced things like, you know, an eyeliner, a foot file, yeah. a nail file. And then now we've got lip serum bombs and I'm just about to sign off on, on cheek sticks like the Ruby and Millie ones were, yeah. a bit of a brow thing. So now every domain has been taken care of, but they're sort of hybrids, yeah. high-performing bits that you know it could be skincare that gives you payoff of color bit yep. of tools bit of this so it's expanding organically and yeah. you deal with things like minimum order quantities we've had the pandemic i launched september 19 did we know that pandemic was coming three four months around the around the bend and it affected supply chains it yeah. affected how you sold so you you know you had to be online all the bricks and mortar business went down so there have been lots of um challenges not just withstanding being a self you know a small yeah. brand and self-funded we had all these other things you know the russian ukraine war started yeah. that also affected our supply chain that even today some brands are still feeling they're out of stock of certain things so yeah. how you raise money how you tell a story how to be content with this is what i've got this is what i'm going to work with um yeah. all of those i've changed and i'm a very it's a very small team with me yeah. really tiny still so people assume there's I, I don't want to ask you how big is your team but i bet yeah. you it's a bit bigger than i hope mine is because you're dealing with the bigger supply chain so yeah there is all of there is all of that. Exactly. I, I, I feel like today, team size is, it, 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 there's so much you can do with such a small, nimble team. But then, yes, if you go to a, a major retailer that's got a thousand doors and all these it just, it, it just it gets changes. amplified, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. I, and I think everything has to be done at the time that you want to do it at and what your goals are. I think there's this obsession in the industry about chasing um crazy growth, crazy revenue. And often it happens when brands are either have investors that want that, you know, or have an exit strategy. But I think about brands like yours and mine is, is while the path might be slightly different and cadences, the, the heart and soul is about enjoying it. It's about doing it with purpose, with passion. Um, and that comes when you get to self, when you have the luxury of even being self-funded in some ways, um, because I don't really count to anyone, but my own heart and my sister's heart in what we want to do. Um, but of course the only issue is when you grow a bigger team, the team, uh, wants, you know, you've got to think about them as well and they want the team, they want the company to grow and get a bigger office and bigger this. And you but have it to, has then, to sustain this you big to sustain. Team. If, if it's That's a growing it. team, it has to sustain, sustain you know, it. And, just... And they want things. Also. Exactly. So then if it's not just us, then it's more people. But generally speaking, it's it's it is something that uh I kind of like um I really enjoy where we are with the business, but it's it's I really, really enjoyed the beginning that the first year of like doing a lot of things, you know, me and my sister pretty much uh single handedly kind of launching the brand. It was a great, great moment because I got to be involved in so many parts. Now I just do a lot of emails and calls and the team executes a lot of stuff because now we're nearly 40 people. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a big change, big, big, big change. Um, but one thing I wanted to ask is, is actually about um, 
the way you you distribute is right now you have obviously a beautiful website i love everything that you know from the masterclass the portfolio to the shop is is your main distribution right now your d2c it's still um it's still e-commerce you know so whether we're yeah. on sephora uk we're not we're not in the us like you are we're in the yeah. sephora uk we're in car beauty yeah. we're we're in amazon and our own website but then yeah. bricks and mortar we are in like um uh Soho farmhouse in oxfordshire yeah, very we're cool in berlin, which is within the building of again Soho house in miami yeah. we're in berlin and then we're in Glen Eagles in Scotland, and we're also in a lovely um, uh, little. It, it's a it's a beautiful store in in um, Sweden in Stockholm, and I think they're in Gothenburg now as well. So it's a makeup artist range, and it's called Cow. Perf- I can't say it in the Swedish way, but that's what it means: perfumery, perf- you know, yeah. pharmacy in there. Beautiful yeah. other makeup artist led brands are in there, you know, like Gucci. I tell you, you know, Gucci. Yeah, Westman, Westman. Yeah, it is in there. Laura Mercier. So they're makeup artists and they've bought other makeup artists, nice brands, very, very edited, and, and they, they yeah. came to us. And so we're in those little things. Fantastic. We're in Bergdorf Goodman now in, in America. So that's our first bricks and mortar stores like that. And wow. we're still looking for more distribution because we need that. But because my team isn't huge, yeah. I, I, we're sort of, we are going forward and then we have to do it gradually because we haven't got a full sales team in place to just go and knock on everyone's doors and bust a beer fix. But no, so exactly. we have to still cre- increase that distribution. And we've yeah. had some people come back to us and that's what we're exploring now. So now, probably this year is the first year of proper business because even, you know, coming out of the oh, pandemic, yeah. all the the, the dregs that have come out of that so that's what we have to check and it's really hard and and it's another having a full sales team is a whole division in itself it's not it's what i know division. i know where yeah. i'd like to be and i know this but there are lots of other things where they come back to you and i know it exists that if you can do the numbers there that allows you to be in the more remote ones that you might not be doing as well but you know you have to look at it you know just look at the whole picture so yep. distribution is really important to success and i'm on that treadmill so almost to the point of where we have to think and i'm having to ask myself am i at that next level where i'm going to have to go for that next level of investment because if i yes. need to i'm going to have to give up no, some equity important. and take that to to raise that and that's where i'm at now yeah no i, I completely so it I mean, needs that. Without that, it won't grow. That's what I, I've noticed as well. Like the luxury of being self-funded will last a certain moment. Uh, it After could last. Point. Uh, and then, and then yeah. it's a luxury, like you say. You have to. Exactly. And, and, and you know, it can still be a luxury of investment when you find the right partner. I think that's the hard thing is, is just making sure well, you date enough. finding the appropriate partner. Because exactly. some people have, that's where they've made a mistake and they're suddenly they haven't got their brand anymore. They've been shortchanged. And, and, and or, we've seen that a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the or industry. it's been an enormous success, but it's no longer in your hands. You know that yeah. you have to give up the control. So to, yeah. whatever it is, it's finding a suitable partner that fits in with where you're at and fits in with your ethos and whatever. Exactly. That's that's the challenge. So yes, we need to do this. We need to do that. And I'm I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm having chats. To find that person, and then I will that 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 yeah. will comfortably allow me to shift to the next level. Well, that, well, also we'll speak offline because I have a lot of um, potential people and a lot of ideas. So that's something that yeah. you know. This is what's also really yeah. important: is founders to talk to founders, help each other, and and know that we're not alone. Because sometimes these moments feel really lonely because it's like you could yes. make different decisions, and all of them could have pros and cons but when you can rely on some founder friends who are really in it and understand it to also help vet are these the right investors or connect me to the right retailer or you know those are things that we have to do to each other because it's our yes, you know, we're, we're one agree. big family i agree you know, even if it's just to guide because all your yeah. experiences are not mine they're not the exactly. same exactly they're not the same but just having that chat if you can yeah. have an honest transparent and 
it's really about looking and helping each other so that it's win-win for everyone because they, there's all kinds of things you can guide me to. You've got, you have connections with America and just the fact that you're in, in those kind of, just that so that things, okay, let me, I must think about that and I can't yeah. made a very important point there. Exactly. So that you can mull it over to help yeah, you exactly. consider the right decision. This is why this podcast or this whatever you are and the more honest somebody is, the more mm. helpful it really is. And everybody can see there's not one recipe no. for everyone. That's exactly They're, it. No, I couldn't say it better myself. That's, but you need uh, that, to listen. The more you listen, the more you, you get. Exactly. Guide. And and the same goes vice versa. You need to be prepared to to speak and, and, and share yes. and to other, yeah. you know, to everyone. Yes. It's, it's a, and I think that there were some of the best ways to do it. Yes. You have forums like, like this podcast and things, but I think just getting in a room with founders is why I like now, thankfully after the pandemic, you know, there are a lot of in-person meetings and a, a great, great events that um, people are willing to to come and share and collaborate. I do feel the beauty industry has gotten a little bit more collaborative than before the pandemic, which is a great feeling. There's a lot more of us now, um, but I do think it's important to have that time, as you said so beautifully before even, to mull over in those moments of hearing a lot of information. Okay, great, I've heard this, heard that, heard that. Now what is best for me and my brand? Um, that's very, very important. Um, so yeah, that's very, um, very good advice Ruby. Um, well, one thing I do want to talk about, which I think is because I've tried your products so beautiful, so innovative to so tell us a little bit about some of your hero products that you feel people have to try and should, should check out, especially talk about the magnetic brushes. I think that's super Do you cool. want me to show it to you or not? Yeah, show it too. Yeah, please. I'll have to lean out of here and just grab it then. Please. <laughs> They're there on my little top. So Yay. there's there's not that many because I don't have a huge range, but I guess the first thing is this magnetic brush, my hero. Which is yeah. so cool. It's in signature red, Ruby. Um, it clicks off like that and then it clicks. Nice. You can hear the click and then it's yep. got a lip. And it's then I have so cool. brush number two now. It's got different heads. So it's got like a square tip. It's got a spoolie yep. and it's got a fine liner. And yep. they're all interchangeable heads. But yep. this was amazing um, because it just meant it was made, you know, the hairs are all made of um, synthetic hair, so they're not pure bristles. Yep. And they can work with liquid cream and um, powder, whatever. Amazing. I've just done a fine line drawing of what the brush looks like. But at the end of the day, I haven't specified you must use this this yep. way. Exactly. I think once you've bought it, it's yours. As an Besides. artist, I use all kind, all the brushes for all the things I'm not supposed to be using it for. But when it's clean, and I, this is what I need, I use yeah. it. So I want you that once you've bought it, use it the way you want. You. It's that's multi-purpose. It. That's it. Yeah, you know, that's it. And... It's very travel friendly because it's yeah. hygienic. It's great for shoving under your desk if we're all back at work. It's yeah. great for doing a night out or something like that. And, you know, you just need these two. You put the lid on it or you just got one head and you put the lid on it and you drop it in yeah. your bag. And because it's red, you yeah. can find it in the dark of anybody's handbag. Yeah. Um, it's fantastic for brides. You know, they're bridesmaids to have those for artists. So. Every makeup artist I've given that to, they've come back and they go, we love it. Uh, can we have more? And I'm like, sure, they keep it online for doing um, touch-ups when they're on set. It's great for red carpet. So if you finish doing red. the red carpet, I put the lipstick in the lip brush of that person with a little something. I put a Q-tip and I just give them that and they've got that in the tiniest bag. They've got touch-up available. So it's very multi-purpose and it's functional it's travel friendly it's and it's a modern thing and you can use it with anything from any other brand yeah then i have i guess my little lip serum bombs which are hybrid they they're again they're more skincare but they offer a payoff of a bit of color so they nourish your cheeks i only started off with three shades because that's all i could afford and then i've now extended it to six shades because they've been successful and I've been able to order and have, you know, like a red, a nude, something called FX, which is 
gives you an effect. So it's got a little bit of shimmer to it. You can line the top of your lips, the lower lip. You can actually put them on your cheeks. You can put them on the brow. You can do multi bits with them. So yeah. everything I have is smaller and grown organically. I have two pencil liners, uh, a liquid one, which is, again, once it's on there, it's very flexible tip. It yeah. won't budge. Yeah. And, a, and a smaller retractable uh, pencil liner. So my benchmark, if I can be honest, was an hourglass one. And it was a yeah. 1.5 tiny little nib. And it was yeah. fantastic. It was a gel one. It was a Jap Japanese formula. But my pet peeve was you cannot retract it. And it would yeah. keep breaking because you couldn't retract it. It gets bashed about and you lost wasteful. Yeah. So then when I was on the search for it, I found one and I had to make a compromise. And that's what we have to do when you have a new brand where they said it can't be 1.5 because it's not retractable when it's that small. Yeah. Can you accept 1.7? And I was like, okay, when you look at it, you can't tell the difference. Not by eye, not till you measure it the way you're yeah. supposed to. And, and my one retracts. So it came to a point where my brand girl was saying, well, what do you want to have? That small? I said, surely you can get smaller. That exists. You know, you keep going. And she said, well, it comes down to do you want it that small or do you want it to retract? And I said, I want it to retract. Yeah. And then I, that's what I've gone for. So every stage, everyone faces these kind of things, but all the bits have been thought out for in my brand. And I just want to make life easy for anyone out there that I've done the donkey work, be sure it's got the good quality, but it's effortless for you. And that's yeah. how they, they are. So we, we've got a mascara and a eyebrow thing coming, cheek sticks nice. coming. Cheek I've sticks. signed off any minute now. Stability yeah. will let me know in a day or two, and then we can go. So it grows small, and that's how I've, I've just done it. Yeah. Because I had it. no choice. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I, I, and also... Honestly, like there's, there's, I always say with every way of building a brand, there's pros and cons. Like I think our duty is to make sure we, we focus on the pros of what we're building and how we're building it. And uh, like for me as well, I, I do believe in less is more. I, I, I think um, there is a journey when it comes to beauty with customers and, and yourself and making because sure you can give time to it. Sorry to interrupt you. Know? you. Yeah. If the products function, less is more because they're exactly. doing what they're Supposed to do. I, exactly. And, and, I, and I, love think, your, I love your range for that too. I love how it smells. I love what it does. And then you can address, you know, each person needs to know themselves as well. What are their needs? Yeah. Then you go to that. If you are somebody who doesn't know yourself and what your needs are, then you can be sold anything. So you can go now. Exactly. This week you'll be sold that. The next week you'll be sold the other. Yeah. But if you're discerning yourself, you like a discerning brand. You'll exactly. find a synergy there that you will, you will go, oh, yeah, they've thought about this. That sounds like what I need. Exactly. And then you stick to it until your needs change, and then you can that brand may have done it, or you can get that from somewhere else. But you need to know what you need and what's good for you first. And then I, I do believe that less is more. You don't need yeah. more in the range that collects dust. Yeah. Just sitting there, useless, idle, is yeah. not actually ideal. <laughs> Fully agree. That uh, couldn't say it better myself. And <laughs> I think it's 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 uh, it's something that consumerism habits uh, by more brands making these conscious decisions will hopefully change as well. Because as you said so rightly, with the retractable and you know, with it's just the waste and the 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 kind of even now, like look, yeah. I've got a. Yeah liquid liner, I have a little pencil liner. I know I'm lacking like a cold pencil, something a bit smudgier and, yeah. um, you know, you can wear in the water line and that. And the same suppliers, because I keep pushing them, they've they've offered me a thing and I've got that and I'm really excited about it. So even the, the actual, you know, the pencil, the body of it is biodegradable yeah. now. So wow, some, amazing. I'm like, ah, okay, I'm going to... Find the means to put yes. that in because I like that. That finishes my wardrobe of eye 
pencils and eyeliners, but yes. in this form where it's new and the whole thing is biodegradable. I yeah. love the sound. So you oh, see, we have to keep pushing that boundary. Yeah, and to. I don't shout, I'm diversive, I'm inclusive, I'm sustainable. I no. just try to follow the three things of reduce, um, reuse, and recycle. Yeah. And, 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 you know, everything is done to that limit. And we don't have a uniform standard of what is vegan. What no, is clean, sustainable? So yeah. until we do, we do the best we can, and I just do it in a silent way. But yeah. that is how and, I've always and, done. And you it. just let the products and the brand speak for itself, and, that, exactly. and people, people will feel that. So, exactly. uh, it's really, uh, yeah. really, ex and I'm excited to see the products that are going to be launching on the horizon. Well, and when the when they come, I was yeah. going to say because what I need is a is a is a address where because they're not all going to be susceptible for you, but at least I can send them to your sister; she can have a yeah. look as well. Is that yeah. um, tell me? Give me an address when you can. So where oh, would be the best one that can be received? And then oh, no, thank I'll you. definitely make sure when I've got the new ones, I'll send you those as well. <laughs> oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. But no, and, and also we'll, we'll we'll speak later off after this podcast offline about um, ways we can work together and help each other on the journey. Because we're, love, you know we're, we we launched in the similar time. You know we we we, we understand that the different journeys but different but similar stories and and i think it's important to to you know when you, especially when you're friends in the industry is even if well, i is wasn't it. friends no, but, you know, but it's, it's like no yeah really look out for you and just say have you thought of that you may already exactly. have done or yeah, or yeah, yeah. about this is but, and really even like if you need my team for anything you know like i have some team like if you like oh i need to check this legal agreement like yeah use my person you know like that i think there's, there's there's stuff that we we feel scared to ask people but we don't know if it's an option until you allow it to be an option but it's exactly. such an easy option and i feel like that is something that I, I i need to work on something out of even this but just generally as a with this podcast you well, know what do you come up with i'd like to help you do that really so, oh amazing well we'll talk then about the that forum. yeah we'll talk yeah about that. I, that's what i want to do like some kind of forum board or something it, where it, we can it is handy and it will it, it is will, it will clear the decks for some people shouldn't yeah. be starting businesses if you know they need to know what they need to and i want to make it like you know the thing i want to plan is i want to do it there is a lot of amazing companies doing this but they're like separate to a brand so therefore there is some sort of like maybe some form of like sponsorship need investment need. but if i can do something where we all co-create it together <laughs> as founders where it's basically yeah. like there is it's by us for us you know no no other way uh, yes i think that's going to be more impactful long term because it's i love just, i uh, love this you know and i and i want to be able to help if i can in any way we'll do there. it we'll plan that Oh, amazing. Right. Well, before before I wrap it up, I, I always end with fire round questions, but I do have first Ruby a desert island situation for you. So, imagine you're coming to the founded beauty retreat, but you can only bring one Ruby Hammer beauty product with you. What will be your go to product right now? Probably then my lip serum balms because they're yeah. so nourishing. I can use Versatile. it on the skin, I can use it on the eyes. I can use it on the skin. You know. Yeah. If that's what it is, I'll probably, if I'm on a desert island, I've probably got a bit of sun. And so it's very hydrating and dewy, like yes, it's perfect. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Oh, it's and amazing. it will do multitask. That's that's yeah. what I would have. I love that. Uh, so if I run questions, there's three questions. And the first thing mm -hmm. that comes to your mind. So the first question is, what's another beauty brand that you're currently loving or using right now? I have loads. So as a makeup artist, I have lots. But then as a yep. woman, I have some. Um, I, I have to say, like, I really like what um, Merit, the brand, yeah. is doing. Yeah. I love the more luxury end of also Victoria Beckham. I love the packaging. I love the textures. I love what she's doing. She's also edited. So it, it's similar to my. I love... Uh, Westman Atelier. Yeah. I just wish they weren't so expensive. I want to say but I like I, I love, love Gucci. It. She came on the podcast. I love it, but I'm like, and oh, then it's like at the other end, yeah. I love someone like Elf. You yeah, know, they've got the technology. They've got the volume. So I love that. So there are there are loads and loads. I love those, but yeah, somewhere higher end, and then someone like Elf. I love. So I love that. Yeah, 
<laughs> I, I also think like, you know, even thinking about it now, like I said, like, oh, it's a bit pricey, but like in a way it's also good. Like it brings desirability. It makes me feel like I can cherish it. And like, I think it's, it's a, it's a good thing in beauty to have sometimes brands that are so beautiful, so good. And it's like a treat, you know, I use yes. it when I, on my yes, special moments. So I, I, I yeah. Myself, I get those. Yeah. And there's exactly. other ones where you think, God, as long as it functions and like a daily good. thing, I can just use that yeah. product. That's perfect. That's exactly. It. That's it. Um, my next question is what or where is your happy place? I think it's, I used to think it would be a geographic location, mm. but actually since losing my, my mom, my, my parents, whatever, I've, mm. I've now become a grandmother. I've realized mm. it's just being with my loved ones so if that's my husband, my brothers, my daughter, yeah. my my son-in-law, my grandson that I adore to bits, it probably it won't matter. I'll be happy person if I'm in their orbit or they're yeah. in mine. I'm happy person. I I, I cannot that's allow such my a to be down. They they yeah. are if wherever they are because we could be in the most wonderful place in the Maldives. Who do you think I want to share that with? Who is nearest yeah. and dearest to you? That's who you want, whether it's your family, whether yeah, exactly. it's your partner, whether it's your nearest, dearest friend that you laugh silly with. So you realize it's not the place. It's I the like it. Yeah. What makes it special is who I'm sharing that with. Love that. that. Beautiful. Uh, and it's, and it's, <laughs> uh, I think uh, everyone's like, yep, nope, I, that makes sense both sense and i think it's it's uh something that we forget to remind ourselves like how attainable that is we, we you know we can just uh do that today you know be in that happy place um yeah. and my last question is if you weren't a beauty entrepreneur guru what would ruby hammer be doing right now it's so funny because i'm an economics graduate yes. and i yes and so at the time before I started assisting and became a makeup artist, I probably would either work for someone like the United Nations, my late aunt used to work for them, or yeah. I would work in the diplomatic corps of a country of my country, say that was Bangladesh yeah. or the EU, because it it allows travel, it's still yeah. with people. You have yeah. to meet and clarify your ideas and do that. So it would still be that kind of thing. Like I didn't have the, my late father was a doctor. I didn't have the brains for that. I thought I did, yeah. you know, romantically, yes, walking yeah. along with other clinic and blah, blah, blah. Mm. But I didn't have the mouse for it. Yeah. But this kind of thing where you're, you know, you're looking at history and background and working with people and trying to make something better for them, I think it would either be something like the UN or the diplomatic corps somewhere where you could mm -hmm behind the scenes, get things done. I think that's what I'd end up with because I can't see myself just teaching. It would involve a bit of travel and I would involve meeting people. I like that because that's what I do in this job. Yeah. And you come across all kinds of things that wouldn't be privy to you. So those kind of, those career paths are similar. That's, yeah. that's what I think it would be. It'd still be team-based. Yeah. travel people and then pooling those experiences to help make the situation better so that's wow. that's what i'd like oh ruby it's been <laughs> such an honor and pleasure hearing your story and and all the wisdom and wise words it's i'm sure mutual. many listening I, i'm oh. so chuffed that you thought of me i'm glad of we've had this time and me i'm too. really grateful given me this platform thank you so much thank, thank you. you well wh where can everyone continue to follow you and the brand the details so then they can continue the journey okay so i'm on instagram um at ruby hammer i'm yep. on our website which is rubyhammer.com yep. and what else was i gonna say um tiktok that that's yeah. that's do, yeah no i am on tiktok it's just i don't yeah. have hundreds of thousands of followers and as i say my name wasn't Kim Kardashian last time I checked, but you know, yes, yeah, on TikTok. Well, you know what? Like, <laughs> this podcast doesn't have a thousands of listeners, but maybe one day. So I'll put all the links anyway, just in yes. case. So it's people, problem, please everyone. follow Ruby. Check her. Check everything out. Check the website out. Check the products out. You will not be disappointed. And uh, yeah, this is just yeah. the beginning of of the, the journey ahead. So thank, thank you so you, much for the time. You. I'm so grateful. I really am. I really am.